And good afternoon from ABC Space Headquarters in New York. With me is our science editor, Jules Bergman, and we are on the air today to bring you a complete report on some very, very important maneuvers to be performed by Apollo 11. Basically, uh, the spacecraft is now about 1,000 miles from the moon and is about to move into position to begin the process that will eventually lead to the landing on the moon tomorrow afternoon. In less than 15 minutes or so from now, Apollo 11 moves behind the moon to the dark side, and uh, we will then lose contact, lose voice contact with the uh, astronauts. And after about six minutes or so, then uh, we will have this first big burn of their main engine aboard the spacecraft that will put them into orbit around the moon. Jules, uh, this is where it becomes very, very interesting, right? Right, Frank. About 19 minutes from now, Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins will fire up their big SPS, or Service Propulsion System engine, a 20,500-pound rocket engine, to slow Apollo 11 so that it's captured by the moon's gravity. It's a walloping big rocket engine burn consuming more than seven tons of fuel and propellant. And it slows the spacecraft, both spacecrafts, both the CSM and the lunar module are docked together from their speed uh, at that time of nearly 6,000 miles an hour to 3,700 miles an hour. It's a tricky time. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins are on their own. Behind the moon, we can't hear them. Mission control can't hear or see them. There's the moon turning, and Apollo 11 has swinging up like this in its orbit. It's coming up behind the moon just about at this time. Now, that orbit will carry them about 70 miles behind the moon if nothing at all is done, if they don't do the lunar orbit burn. If they do it, and they're turned around in a retrograde position for a breaking burn, if they do it, they descend closer to the moon like this and are captured by the moon's gravity and then swing around the moon any number of times like that. In point of fact, 13 times until they get set for the descent maneuvers and the landing tomorrow. Uh, as they come around the moon at that time. Because later on this afternoon, then they'll make another, right. uh, another orbit now burn, won't they, to come down still lower. Right. Now let's look at what's going to happen if the LOI burn shouldn't work. They would come up behind the moon just like this, as they are, a little bit of break up there, and swing back to Earth just like that, and land in about 45 hours from this afternoon. There's no reason to think that's going to happen. Yeah. We're coming up very close now on the scheduled lunar orbit burn time. And this is the way it would look through our simulation inside the Apollo 11 cockpit at this time. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins going through the enabling the maneuvers. Control. Here's Apollo Control. 49 minutes. Apollo 11 should have started uh, this long burn. Duration, 6 minutes, 2 seconds. Delta V, 2,917 feet per second. Given that burn, we expect uh, an orbit of 61 by 169.2 nautical miles. Madrid AOS. Madrid AOS. That's it. The Madrid tracking station has acquired signal. And we're hearing Armstrong very faintly in the background, too faintly to understand. Capcom McCandless calling Apollo 11, saying Apollo 11, Apollo 11, do you read Houston? Bruce McCandless calling. Armstrong reading back his remaining fuel and burn times to Houston. Very scratchy radio communication. The antennas still aren't set, but Armstrong and his crew are obviously in good shape. The LOI burn went perfectly. As we were saying a uh, short while ago, 
while we were waiting, really, to acquire the signal from uh, Apollo 11, uh, Russia's Luna 15 has moved into a slightly higher orbit around the moon. Uh, they have, of course, promised to notify Frank Borman that uh, Luna 15 would not in any way, uh, well, they promised to notify him in the event of any substantial change in the flight plan of Luna 15. They have still, of course, not volunteered any information about the ultimate mission of uh, Luna 15, and we don't know yet whether uh, they really do plan to go on down and uh, scoop up some moon rocks and get back to Earth with them before the men of Apollo 11 can do the same. But the Russian flight is, of course, unmanned.